Hey, it's Mike Chen. I love swords. I don't know if it's because I've always wanted to be a ninja or the fact that I think swords are the most noble of weapons. I mean, nowadays you can always get a gun, but back when everyone was carrying a sword, you've got to have some skills if you want to rob me. And if someone was trying to rob me and we get into a sword fight and I lost, then I would happily give up my wallet because it's technically my fault. I should have trained harder. Also, there's something about swords that is almost spiritual and mysterious, perhaps because because there are so many legends surrounding them. In a previous video, I talked about the cursed Muramasa sword. And in this video, let's talk about another mysterious sword called the Sword of Gojian. And before we get into it, I just want to give a shout out to the sponsor of this video, Squarespace. Squarespace is a service I've been using personally for years now. And whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your move with Squarespace. Over 50 years ago, a rare and unusual sword was found in an ancient tomb in China. This ancient weapon is known as the Sword of Gojian. And though it's supposed to be over 2,000 years old, its blade is said to not have a single trace of rust. The sword's blade has even somehow managed to retain its sharpness, drawing blood when a person's finger is tested on its edge as if it was completely immune by the passage of millennia. But aside from this strange quality, its craftsmanship has been praised for being intricately detailed for a sword that was forged in a supposedly technologically limited era. The discovery of the Sword of Gojian dates back to 1965, during which an archaeological survey was being performed along the second main aqueduct of the Zhang River Reservoir in Jinzhou of Hebei Province. More than 50 ancient tombs of the Chu state, a successful hegemonic and expansionist state during the spring and autumn period in the early 8th century BCE, were found in Drangling County. And so an archaeological dig was initiated, beginning in the middle of October 1965 and ended in January 1966. In December of 1965, four 4.3 miles or 7 kilometers from the ruins of Jinan, an ancient capital of Chu, the archaeological team responsible for the excavation discovered an ancient tomb. In this casket was a skeleton, and next to it was a near airtight wooden box. From inside this box, they removed a perfectly preserved bronze sword in its scabbard. This sword is now identified as the Sword of Gojin, and it was unearthed by these archaeological researchers along with 2,000 other artifacts. To their amazement, upon unsheathing the bronze sword, Sword, its blade was revealed to be untarnished, and the fact that the sword appeared to be in perfect condition despite being buried in damp conditions for more than 2,000 years was astonishing. Tests conducted by archaeologists showed that the sword's blade could easily cut a stack of 20 pieces of paper. So after 2,000 years, how could this be? Well, the Sword of Gojian is among the earliest known Jin swords. A Jin sword is a double-edged straight sword used during the last 2,500 years in China. Jin swords are among the earliest known sword types in China, and these bladed weapons are closely associated with Chinese mythology. In Chinese folklore, this type of sword is referred to as the gentleman of weapons, and is considered to be one of the four major weapons along with the staff, spear, and saber. The sword of Gojian is relatively short compared to other historical pieces of its kind. It is a bronze sword with a very high concentration of copper, which made it more flexible and less likely to break apart. The blade's edges are made of tin, which not only made the sword harder, but also made it more capable of retaining a sharper edge. The sword also contains small amounts of iron, lead, and sulfur. The sword's high proportion of sulfur and sulfide copram is revealed to be what gives the weapon its rust-proof quality, as sulfur decreases the chance of tarnish in the blade's patterns. Weighing 30.9 ounces or 875 grams, the sword of Gojian measures 21.9 inches or 55.7 centimeters long, including its 3.3 inch or 8.4 centimeter handle hilt. The blade, on the other hand, is one 1.8 inches or 4.6 centimeters wide at its base. Repeating black rhombic etchings cover both sides of the blade, while blue crystals and turquoise are embedded on the sword handle. The grip of the sword is bound by silk, while its pommel is composed of 11 concentric circles. Now let's talk about who the sword belonged to. The owner of this ancient sword was determined through the inscription etched on its blade. On one side of the blade, eight characters arranged in two columns of text are visible. These characters found near the sword's hilt are written in an ancient Chinese script known as Bird Worm Seal Script, or Niao Chong Zhua, which literally means birds and worms characters. Because of the writing system's intricate decoration to the defining strokes, it is a variant of Zhuan, or Seal Script, which is very difficult to read. Initial analysis deciphered six of the eight characters. The characters translated to Yue Wang, or King of Yue, made this sword for his personal use. According to experts, the remaining two characters are likely to be the name of the king. From the sword 
its origin in 510 BC to the U.S. state's demise at the hands of the Chu in 334 BC, nine kings ruled the Yue, including Gou Jian, Lu Cheng, Bu Shou, and Zhu Gou, among others. Identifying the correct king that owned the sword sparked debate among archaeologists as well as Chinese language scholars. Eventually, the experts reached a consensus and decided the original owner of the sword was Gou Jian, who reigned between 496 and 465 BC, making the sword around 2,500 years old. And just a little background, Gou Jian was a well-known emperor in Chinese history who reigned over the U.S. state during the spring and autumn period. As a ruler, Gou Jian never relished in kingly riches, and instead, he ate food suited for peasants and even forced himself to taste bile, which is one of the most bitter things in existence as a reminder of his humiliation serving under the Wu state. Hence, as a monarch, he was made famous by his perseverance in times of hardship and his ruthlessness during battle. Apart from its historical value, many scholars have wondered how the sword of Gou Jian managed to remain rust-free in a humid environment for over 2,000 years, and how it was possible for it to stay sharp today as it was originally forged. They were also impressed with the delicate decorations carved into the sword and by the fact that not a single spot of rust can be found anywhere. In the hopes of replicating the technology used to create the sword, researchers analyzed ancient bronze shards and they found that the sword is resistant to oxidation due to sulfation on the sword's surface. Combined with an airtight scabbard, this allowed the legendary sword to remain in such pristine condition even after more than two millennia. This also indicated that the swordsmiths of the Wu and Yue regions in southern China were incredibly high skilled to the point that they were able to incorporate rust-free alloys into their blades. Their skill in sword making aided ancient weapons of the time like the Sword of Gou Jian. And since its discovery, the Sword of Gou Jian is regarded as a state treasure in China and is deemed as a true legendary sword that defied the rigors of time. This archaeological artifact continues to be revered by the Chinese people, much like the fascination over King Arthur's mythical Excalibur in the West. The Sword of Gou Jian was lent to the National Palace Museum in Taipei, where it was on display until 2011, along with various other bronze pieces from the 1965 excavation. Presently, this archaeological artifact is in the possession and care of the Hubei Provincial Museum. You know guys, while making this video, I kept thinking, I need this sword. But I've got to be honest, my skills with swords and, and even kitchen knives are, are sort of lacking at this point. So if somebody actually gave me that legendary sword, I know I'm going to play with it and just probably, you know, cut my own ear off. But I really don't think I'm alone in this. Let me ask you guys, if somebody gave you a truly legendary, super sharp sword right now, what would you do with it? I mean, are you really going to just like put it somewhere and just look at it? How many of you would start swinging it around and do what I do and probably, you know, just cut your own arm off? This is honestly the reason I don't have any sword in my house right now. I love swords. I love really sharp swords, but I cannot have one in this house because I'm going to play with it and I'm going to get hurt. Also guys, just to let you know, I've been running this channel for a few years now and I've always wanted my own merch store. So I've been working on that using Squarespace. And honestly, this was way before they even asked to be a sponsor on this channel. So maybe I can get that store for free now. I don't know. I love Squarespace because they have super clean, simple, beautiful templates and the whole site is really easy to use. And I should know because I cannot code to save my life. But with Squarespace, you don't really need Need any coding skills and you can still create any sort of website you want. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. So if you ever wanted to start your own website, whatever the website may be, definitely check this service out. And you can start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash beyond science. And make sure you enter offer code beyond science at checkout to get 10% off your first purchase. And I also have the link for you guys in my description box. And like I mentioned before, you really don't need to know any programming at all. And that's why I love of it so definitely give it a try and you'll also be supporting this channel which would be awesome thank you guys so much for watching this video i'll see you later